Hello everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. In this tutorial, we will learn about adenomyosis. So the learning objectives will be, we will see what adenomyosis is, we look into some historical aspects of adenomyosis, we look into epidemiology of adenomyosis and then move on to understand the pathogenesis, the clinical features, the morphology and finally the treatment and prognosis of adenomyosis. Now what is adenomyosis? Adenomyosis is presence of endometrial glands and stroma. So basically, it is the presence of endometrium in the myometrium. Endometrium incorporates both glands and stroma. So basically, this is an endometrial disorder and these glands and stroma are derived from endometrium basalis. Okay. Now, this foci of adenomyosis is often surrounded by hyperplastic or hypertrophic myometrium. So coming to the historical aspects of adenomyosis, these findings, you know, was first initially described by Carl von Rogatansky way back in 1860s before endometriosis was discovered. And the term adenomyosis was first used by Frankl in 1925. Though it's, it's, most, it's more common in the late reproductive years, most commonly in fourth and fifth decades of life. Okay. But you know, it can also affect around 20 to 25% of reproductive age women. So the other risk factors for adenomyosis include multiparity, could be a prior caesarean section or even uterine surgeries. Now let's understand the differences between adenomyosis and endometriosis. We know that endometriosis is presence of endometrial glands and stroma outside the uterus. Basically, endometrium outside of the uterus is endometriosis, whereas adenomyosis is endometrium within the myometrium, that is within the uterus, presence of endometrial glands and stroma inside the uterus. So, the glands and stroma in adenomyosis are derived from endometrial basalis in contrast to endometri endometriosis where glands and stroma are derived from endometrium functionalis. The functional layer of endometrium you know, gives rise to endometriosis. Now, let us see what is this endometrial basalis. So, the glands in endometrial basalis have constant appearance throughout the cycle, irrespective of the day of the cycle. right? And these glands are weakly proliferative type glands. They do not show any secretory activity. And in the stroma of this type of endometrium, the stroma is spindled and they are non-decidualized. Remember, endometrial basalis, weakly proliferative glands, no secretory activity, non-decidualized spindled stroma. Right. So, this is a normal, just the illustration of endometrium and myometrium. Remember, the interface between endometrium and myometrium is often irregular. Now, what is the pathogenesis of adenomyosis? So, the first important, you know, there are various theories proposed for the pathogenesis of adenomyosis. The first and the foremost one is invasion theory, where there is downward growth and invagination of the endometrial basalis into the myometrium. Okay, so that is the invasion theory. Second one is the reaction theory, where basically there is response for any kind of tissue injury okay tissue injury and repair that results in myometrial weakness or dysfunction and this myometrial weakness or dysfunction is brought about by some form of tissue injury could be by trauma from previous uterine surgery or preg pregnancy okay and that results in invagination of the endometrium into the myometrium so that's the reaction theory the third one is a metaplasia theory where you know there is metaplasia of pluripotent malarian rest. So, there can be some amount of remnants of malarian rest in the myometrium, malarian duct remnants in the myometrium and that, you know, can give rise to adenomyotic foci. The last one is the stem cell theory where there is differentiation of endometrial glands and stroma de novo from the stem cells and these stem cells, they can be either located locally in the myometrium or the stem cells can be derived from the bone marrow. Okay, So, in this case, the progenitor stem cells differentiate into 
endometrial glands and stroma so this is a stem cell theory in contrast to the metaplasia theory where the remnants of malarian duct they undergo metaplasia to form endometrial glands and stroma that is metaplasia theory okay so these are the four important theories the invasion theory the tissue reaction theory the metaplasia theory and the stem cell theory now once the endometrial glands are in the myometrium now we need to understand the reasons for the progression of adenomyosis so the most important reason which is re caused is epithelial mesenchymal transition so what does that mean that means this epithelial mesenchymal transition endows the cells the endometrial cells and stroma with migratory and invasive property and this emt or the epithelial mesenchymal transition is brought about or induced by estrogen okay now how is this estrogen you know uh, how is what is the reason for increase in estrogen levels so it could be because of abnormal genetic or epigenetic factors and that might lead to sex steroid hormone aberrations which means there can be hyper estrogenism and progesterone resistance what does that do that can induce emt where the where it endows the cells with migratory and invasive properties see this hyper estrogenism also results in proliferation of the cells and result in fibrosis typically brought about by tgf beta transforming growth factor beta where there is proliferation of endometrial glands and stroma and that of the surrounding myometrial cells it can also result in endometrial angiogenesis and it can result in micro trauma of the junctional zone which results in you know some more adenomyotic foci in the myometrium so this is how the adenomyotic foci is formed and progressed now what is the significance of knowing adenomyosis the most important one is it is often associated with morbidity okay the most common presenting symptoms which adenomyotic patients presents are abnormal uterine bleeding the pelvic pain and sometimes even infertility okay there there can be dysmenorrhea or dyspareunia basically because of increased myometrial contractility or myometrial hypercontractility okay one third of the patients of adenomyosis are often asymptomatic now another important thing we need to understand is that adenomyosis frequently coexist with other gynecological diseases such as endometriosis and uterine fibroids now how do we diagnose adeno adenomyosis it was possible earlier you know initially earlier uh, days it, the diagnosis of adenomyosis was only possible through pathological examination of hysterectomy specimen where you demonstrate the foci of adenomyosis in the myometrium okay now there is trans vaginal ultrasound and mri which is the most common non invasive diagnostic modality to diagnose adenomyosis in hysterectomy specimens microscopically what is you know important is that the the depth of endometrium presence within the myometrium that was used as a cut off point for the histological diagnosis is more than or equal to 2.5 mm on one microscopic field at 10 times magnification from the junction endometrial myometrial junction now let us understand the gross and microscopic feature of adenomyosis grossly you can see that there is this is the body of the uterus and that is the cervix so you can see that there is asymmetrical enlargement of the body of the uterus so that's a compressed endometrial cavity so the classical cut surface of adenomyotic uteri is that of trabeculations so this is a trabeculated cut surface where you can even see petechial like you know tiny foci of endometrial tissue all these are tiny foci of endometrial tissue petechial like tiny foci of endometrial tissue you can also see these larger areas which are basically blood filled cystic areas so this is a very classical appearance of endometriosis on gross examination microscopically you can easily make out that there is an endometrium on one end and intervening myometrium is normal and within the myometrium you find the foci of endometrium the foci of endometrium meaning you find endometrial glands and stroma in the myometrium
hey, higher magnification showing endometrial glands and stroma in the myometrial tissue that is adenomyosis now how do we treat adenomyosis it, the treatment of adenomyosis depends upon the age of the patient the symptom severity whether the patient goes wants a future conception and associated comorbidities okay because we we should uh, realize we should understand that adenomyosis regresses after menopause there are different modalities of treatment the first line of treatment is always medical treatment where you treat the symptoms by using anti inflammatory drug you can give oral contraceptive pills pills gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh analogs or even progestins okay the second line of treatment is the minimally invasive uh, surgeries where you do excisional adenomyomectomy for a smaller foci of adenomyosis you can even do a myometrectomy or myometrectomy or hysteroscopic resection or ablation of adenomyotic foci and even uterine artery embolization can be tried as a treatment modality for adenomyosis if none of these work the final resort is hysterectomy we did understand what adenomyosis is we looked into historical aspects the various epidemiological aspects and then in detail about the pathogenesis clinical features and morphology and finally the treatment aspect of adenomyosis so thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and please do share if you find this video useful thank you <laughs>